And hello, and welcome to the 64th episode of Salt Place on the Sea. I'm headed towards Godfall. Maybe, hopefully, I'm a little past Godfall. I'm gonna do the dungeon. I don't know what else to call it. The, like, excursion with the Foxfire Candles. Um... I guess before I do that, though, let me read off what I have to do. Um, the Admiralty wants me to go to Wither. Um, what the fuck does that mean? I have no idea what that means. Okay, well, the immunity wants me to go to Wither. The Merchant Venture wants seven lamentable relics or seven dark dark coffee. I have four lamentable relics. Um, the Spies in Conan's Heart want prisoner's honey. The Chronicler of Glory's Death at History's wants Glory's Death from History's Beach. Um, I want to explore the Nocturne with Foxfire Candles. I'm currently exploring Godfall with Foxfire Candles. Um... The, I, I don't know what the fuck this gen genial magician serpent image Irem Vendorbite thing is. I will probably be in Irem this episode though, so maybe I'll figure it out there. Because I'm not figuring it out in Vendorbite. I've gone like three times and haven't found it. Um, I need to talk to the Fathom King to continue the Father's Bones plot. Um, and then the Dawn Machine wants an Element of Dawn, a Casket of Sapphires, Forty Stygian Ivory, the Mechanic Secret, and an Unsettling Sage in King Eater Castle. Um, all that's left for Principal's End is a Little Flint, which I'm pretty sure is an Ambiguous Aeolith, and I'm not sure how to get that. Um, the Navigator wants to go to Avid Horizon to finish his story. And Isri at the Isle of Cats wants a surfacer from the Cumaean Canal to give to as a as a gift, I think, to the Pirate King. But for now, I am going to explore the Shattered Citadel. Let me adjust myself in my chair before I do this. Okay, that's better. Explore the Shattered Citadel. Before the stalactite was a monastery, before it ever fell from the roof, it was a citadel. The fall shattered it and killed all its occupants. Probably. Why don't you take a look? Oh, eleven candles. Okay. Through the cellars. The monks have blocked the tunnels into the citadel. The starved men lived there, one says vaguely. They're all dead, of course, but you still wouldn't want to meet them. Still, there's a gap in the cellar wall that they keep meaning to fix. And now we get the fun new different background. Okay, I have 11 foxfire candles, so I should be able to be here for a while. All the neath is dark. The citadel is dark as only a once bright place can be. It hung up there among the false stars, drowned in azure light for how long? Now it's here. So are you. Let's go deeper. The citadel lies on its side. All its halls and tunnels lit crazily. Edge your way through like an ant through a broken puzzle box. Onwards, you found your way deeper into the citadel wind gusts a labyrinth of dwelling galleries you hear the z the passage branches and opens into a tangle of galleries on the skin of the surface there are doorways to dwelling places all empty now all leading into one another like the cells of a honeycomb perhaps you can find your way through painstaking pro progress 
you make your way through an asymmetrical foam of beehive dwellings, past faded frescoes of the sea green from above, beneath swags of cobweb where single sorrow spiders scuttle, past a long mummied human corpse. Its limbs are curled and knotted like vines. What happened here? Let's go deeper. Onwards. Light flares. A labyrinth. Okay. This is the same labyrinth of dwelling galleries. Uh-huh. 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 Deeper still. Stone drops. Um, so we can either search the church of the starved men or let the nacreous outcast approach the altar. Ooh, okay, let me read this description. A cruciform chamber with a great altar, rows of rotting pews. Perhaps the windows once held stained glass. The altar is, stri is dripstone, painstakingly carved into organic shapes. Jointed limbs, eye bulbs, snapping claws, armored excrescences. I want to let the nacreous outcast approach the altar. He burbles, his frondules tremble. Imitatorish, the outcast burbles. They stole our actual arch. They fought. They would be ush. It shakes with rage or laughter and collapses before the altar. Still, the change remains. The change remains. It's the longest speech you've ever heard from it. It remains motionless in prayer while you search. An inscription on the altar reads, uh, So are we shaped. The stone craft is perfect, but the spelling seems eccentric. Two stone knives rest on its surface, along with a chunk of flint that might be a knife, a tool, or simply a lump of rock. Three human skulls wait in a niche at the back. Two have warped and lengthened jaws. The third has slumped and run like a melted candle, although it feels as solid as any bone to the touch. What now? You can press on, but the going will get harder from here. Or you could turn back with your treasures. So we got two outlandish artifacts, three lamentable relics, which means we have enough lamentable relics for the merchant venture, and an ambiguous Aeolith um, for the principles of coral. But I want to go deeper because that's the point of the game. Um, I mean, I still have eight more candles. Onwards. Silence. Silence. A nasty moment. The tunnels coil like intestines. The stalactite seems to pulse with the beat of an unknown heart. Stale air. The gases down here will maze the mind and convulse the spirit. Press on. Um, I'm gonna go in... If I remember correctly going in by re retracing my steps only takes one so i'm going to go i think until i have two left onwards horrors walk fight off a frenzied assault one two six seven eight a rabble of leathery mummy things mouths agape comes boiling from crevices crooked limbs reach for you Retreat! Your crew crumbles. They're not strong, these leather remnants, but they're terribly tenacious. Not dead, exactly. Half-living memories persisting on reflex and hate. Fall back! Fall back! Well, I still want to go deeper, though, so... Onwards. Dreams wait. Lost in amber. A spherical room. The ceiling drips honey. The walls and floor are glazed with warm orange-yellow. It gives under your touch, slowly, but when you try to pull your hand free, it takes all your strength. Tables and chairs project through the yard-thick amber on the floor. Enough to cross, perhaps. A safe crossing. You each step cautiously from chair to table to bench. Thankfully, the amber's grasp keeps the furniture from swaying too much. As you reach the far side, a careless crewman stumbles and the chair swings sideways with a clod clotted splorch sound, but you've made it across. Deeper still. Onwards, stone drops. 
Alright, the same room again. And deeper still. Horrors walk. The gate of forms. Oh, interesting. I guess I will not have the ambiguous yellow. Anyways, the gate of forms. Here, in the floor, because of the stalactite's fall, is a gate of glittering chalcedony, half lost beneath rubble, but thick enough to resist the most determined assault. Its surface is a relief of twisted limbs, distorted faces, screaming, screaming in glee, carved, molded, impossibly natural. A pit at its center might be a key socket, or only a mouth. He nope, I have wrote that one okay. Making an entrance. Perhaps once the gate was finely counterbalanced. Perhaps once hidden machineries would have roared at the touch of the Aeolith, and the gate would have swung open like oiled glass. Now sorry. Now the Aeolith only triggers the unlocking mechanism. It takes three sailors with crowbars to move the rubble and force the door open down open so that when you bring it free it collapses inwards with an echoing crash climb through the gap into a space that roars with wind you have entered the citadel's root what's down here the root gallery you've traversed half the length of the stalactite called godfall from the monastery to here the starved men cut a tremendous gallery around the whole root of the stalactite, leaving a vast central pillar to support its weight. In its day, the view must have been unrivaled. Remnants of salvaged glass and wooden glass and wooden eating houses, viewing booths, sight temples. Let me read that sentence again. Remnants of salvaged glass and wooden eating houses, viewing booths. Viewing booths, sight temples, still clinging to the edges, but the root has been shattered and the stalactite fell. You know, I'm not sure that I... There needs to be an and in that sentence, maybe. Go a little closer. Clamber carefully across the tilted surface of the gallery floor towards the shattered stump of the root. A dozen corpses, decades dry, lie at the stalagmite's root. You think there was a barricade here, but the fall has smashed it and the remnants have fallen into the sea. Were they defending the root? Gunnar Atkins squ squints at the scorched and shattered rock and nods wisely. Gunpowder, he opines. Blew it up themselves. Killed the whole city. Starved men, eh? Alice heard they fight each other. Mad as toads. In the immemorial tradition of subterranean adventurers, you search the corpses. Well, it's not like they've been buried. Their bones of their limbs and faces are blurred and twisted like melted wax. You find trinkets, disgusting remnant chunks, and... Oh, good God! Yes, yes, that's worth a bit. Worth a lot. Best not let your men see it. Nothing else remains here. Signal your ship with flares and she'll approach. You can scramble down and drop into the sea to be retrieved. Much safer than the tunnels of Godfall. So we got a captivating treasure, two more secrets, um, more uncovering the shattered citadel. We're done with our adventure. I have seven more lamentable relics and an eyeless skull. Thick plates of bone have developed over the orbits, as if to hide or protect them. They are smooth and cold to the touch. Irigo light shimmer glimmers in the line of the jaw. Neat. Oh, that was very fun. Okay, we now I have to check. Do I still need Irigo? For the guy. Is it in the hold? I do still need Yuriko. Interesting. The Forgotten Corners of Home. Hmm. Let's do a shouting, which I think is a port report. Okay. Let me check my hold again. Okay, so I have 14 Lamentable Relics. Ah, oh, rad. I do still have the Ambiguous Aelith. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, there's a lot going on here. Um... With that, I think I'm going to swing around to Esteval and then north and then back.
that was very fun. I fucking love this game, y'all. It's a great, fun game. to take care of this level ups. Okay, um, I have five secrets, so that's one hearts, and then I think I'm gonna do two veils and two more hearts, because I don't want to risk getting more wing uh, wounds. of all sun um let's compile a port report and let's gather some supplies i think Nine supplies. Nice. No shops here. I really love Estival's music. I mean, I love all the music in this game, but Estival's is very fun. This guy's called the Behe Mustache. It's just fun. I feel like they timed this game really well, if that makes sense. Like, the amount of space between ports is like perfect. To not take very long but also like really feel like they're separate places nope that was real fucking dumb Irum, the pillared city I'm gonna try this because I just want to know what it does. Sacrifice a lamentable relic. You will break the ice in a wide on a wide pool. You will toss the relic in. Trade a lamentable relic for two moves in the great game. Life lived. When the waves settle, you will see falling snow and black bark. You will see two men standing in wintry woods. The younger will prove himself to the older. Others have done so before. Others will do so after. The vision will change. The old man will sip coffee on a sunlit street. He will write an order. He will send a pawn below to London. Look at a port or a port report. I don't. Okay. That's tempting. I don't have a space to carry 50 fuel. It's not tempting. Okay. Hmm. 
I'll just leave that. I think I'm happy with what I... Mm, I think I'm happy with what I have right now. I don't have specific reasons right now to trade anything around, so I'm going to leave that to figure out when I do have a specific reason. To the Avid Horizon. To read some stories about cannibalism. Um, I think I will read the cannibal letters. I don't know what else to call them. The navigator's letters. Just, they're fun to read. Um, I guess if you want to skip them, you can probably skip... I'm not going to say for sure that it's the rest of the episode. I don't remember exactly how long they are. Just because I've already read them and they're a bit long. Um, feel free to skip past them. I won't feel bad. Avid Horizon. This is the end. Let's lead the sigil-ridden navigator to a certain dock pillar. Scraps of paper, stiff with northern frost, are stuffed into its cracks. Unforgiven, a message is carved into the wood. If you wish to return to London, if you seek the forgiveness of the Empress, if you will sacrifice all to make amends, record your name and crime. Your, your navigator hunts through the slips of paper. They are a library of villains and villainy. Here are murders, betrayals, treasons, and perjuries. He stops, stares at one, pulls it free. This is mine, he says. I wrote this. It is a confession. Beneath, in more recent and less careful letters, he has added a note. You did not answer. If I cannot be forgiven, then I will forget. The Chapel of Lights will help me for a price. He laughs wildly. Twice! I paid them twice, once to take my memories, and once to guide me back to them. His laughter deepens to hysteria. Two crewmen help you drag him back to the ship. Um, gather some intelligence, get that port report, and then I will speak to this guy. Captain, may I speak with you in private? His voice is dull, his sigil throbs, red as embers in the neathy gloom. His forgotten crime. He hands you his confession, retrieved from Void's approach. Please read. Read the first page. Okay, there's only four pages. To whom it may concern, I hereby record, record my full and honest confession in the hopes of absolution in her, ma in her enduring majesty's service. In May, my brother Richard and I took service on the Bonnie Swan. He as a boatswain, I as a navigator. The captain, Swinsburne, was a good man, but ambitious. When we reached King, Eater Ca King Eater's castle, our supplies were low, but we pressed on in the hope of finding land. There was none. Our stores nearly depleted, we turned back, and here I committed the first of my crimes. I mistook my readings and set a bad course. For days we steamed northwest, not west, into the empty dark. Our supplies ran out, and still no sign of port. Hunger set in, and terror, and what I pray was madness. Ravening, desperate, raving, we agreed to draw lots, with the loser giving up life and flesh so the others could go on. The first of us to draw the short straw was the captain. The second was my brother. My dear, solemn, solid Richard. There were more after. Seven times we drew. Seven of our number went into the pot, and not a one of them quietly. Those of us who made it back to port swore never to speak of our crime, but one of us, someone with a keener conscience than mine, confessed. I fled the noose to Z again. I regret it all. I will do anything. Please. Here he has scribbled his later note when the Admiralty failed to select him for absolution through service. You did not answer. If I cannot be forgiven, 
then I will forget. The Chapel of Lights will help me for a price. His eyes meet yours when you look up from the page. They are dull as old iron. I am done, citizen. I am done. I have one last thing to ask of you. His last request. The truth has broken him. Parting ways. He buries his face in his hands. Even if I could remember, I would not want to, but it is only a matter of time until this. He runs a finger over his sigil. Takes something I can't do without. Maybe I will forget how to breathe or which way is north. Perhaps I will strand us all at Z again and it'll be oaths of silence and straws in the dark. Be rid of me, citizen. Put me ashore somewhere I can be forgotten. Now, oh, I would love to leave him, but I really want to. I want to know what happens if I suggest another option. So I'm going to go with that one. It would be a release for him of a sort, and it has a certain sanguine poetry. Your stomach growls. You describe a rite that you would conduct at King Eater's castle. Afterwards, he would forget his pain. He would even forget that he forgot. The part of him that suffers will be gone, and whatever remains will serve you. He shuddered. He shudders. It is not forgiveness, he whispers, but perhaps it is justice. Interesting. So I have to go to King Eater Castle for that one. Okay. I guess that might be why they call it King Eater. Um, okay. I'm going to go to the Chapel of Lights, and then I think I will end this episode. Mm, I'll end it right now. Um, thank you very much for listening to this, the 34th episode, I think, of Salt Place on the Sea. I will talk to you later. Goodbye.